Hello all and welcome to the Barney School Business Breakout Session today. Thank you all for joining us and I hope you're enjoying UHART's Fall Open House so far. My name is Liz Hodge and I'm the Admission Manager for the Barney School of Business. We wish that we were welcoming you to campus today and hopefully we'll you will all get the chance to meet us on campus soon. I just wanna remind all students that are joining us today to use a chat feature at any time to ask us any questions about the presentation or if you can't um, see the presentation for some reason, feel free to let us know through the chat feature. Today we have with us the Dean of our business school, Dean Mulready, our program director, Celia Lofink, three of our current business students, Sakari Makari, Garrick Nagpal, and Samantha Mayhew. And one of our many corporate partners, our representative Todd Peters from Amazon. Thank you all for joining us today. Celia, can you move on to our next slide to show our audience the picture of our Barney School of Business? This picture shown on the screen is the front, is the front of our Barney School of Business. This addition was added to the Barney School in 2018 and houses a trading room, a common area for students, and an active learning corridor rooms that are designed to reconfigure for any class and purpose with high-tech learning collaborative spaces. Today, our Dean of the Business School, Dean Mulready and Celia Lofink, are broadcasting live from our business school. Dean Mulready, I will turn it over to you to kick off our event today. Thanks very much, uh, Liz, and uh, welcome everyone. I hope you could hear me. Uh, we're in the school right now. We're actually in the trading room of the, of the Barney School. So nice to have you here. In a moment, Celia will share uh, some comments about the school, go through some slides. But first, I'd like to talk about one of the graduates of the Barney School, and that's me. Yes, I am a proud grad of the Barney School of Business. And uh, what you're gonna hear today in the presentation is we'll be talking about career readiness. And what does that mean? Because other schools talk about it as well. Well, we believe part of being career ready is to be competent, connected, and confident. When I went to school here, that was not part of our pitch. We didn't even talk about career readiness then. But I will tell you, all of that actually took place for me back then. I felt very confident when I left. And that's the word I felt was most important at all, because I believe I only feel confident when I'm prepared. And the Barney School prepared me to have a successful business career. So I'd like to share some of what I did in my business career and then loop back to how I joined back here at the Barney School. I started at the Aetna. I worked there for about 25 years and during that time, I had a number of jobs. And the last one was one of my favorites. I ran the National Commercial Accounts Operation. And the type of customers I dealt with were Fortune 500. Boeing, Mary Kay Cosmetics, Disney, Golf Plus Western, and Caesars World. And it gave me the opportunity to go through tremendous negotiations on the services that they need and the proper price that we had to offer for them. And then one day when working for Aetna, got called into the boardroom by the chairman and said, you know, we're going in a different direction. What we're going to do is we're gonna become a health company. And as I look back at that now, it was the right decision for them because the Aetna became one of the largest, I believe the top four in the United States for healthcare. So what did I do? I had the opportunity to go to the acquiring company that we were sold to. I, instead, I elected to listen to a recruiter and I went to another company, New York based and became the president and CEO of Orion Specialty. Another job that I enjoyed, but three years later, during this period of mergers and acquisitions, we were acquired again. And this time by a British company called Royal and Sun Alliance. This was a global company and they asked me if I would end up running the US operations. I became president and CEO of the US operation, about a $4 billion a revenue stream, which was terrific. As time went on, I was also recruited by a private equity firm to join them out of Chicago. And we started up another insurance company, which as you can guess, we sold through an acquisition process. During my career, I ended up being in about 20 different mergers and acquisitions 
either on being on the buy cell side or the sell side. Very interesting experience and something I never anticipated uh, uh, that I would be doing that. And my final job, which I retired from a couple of years ago, is I was the uh, work for a Canadian company, also global, and I ran the US operation as chief operating officer for Crum and Forster. So I mentioned the mergers and acquisitions because when you think of career ready, career ready does not mean being prepared for one job. It is truly the career and what you can learn from your foundation here and going to different companies, you can connect the dots to see the value you get from learning from all those different places. And as I mentioned, Barney prepared me to be successful and much I appreciate it. So what happens in terms of my connection back here? When did I come back? Well, while I was still in the business world, about 20 years ago, the Dean of the Barney School asked me if I wanted to join the Board of Visitors. And I did. And I, along with 25 other local business people, we would meet periodically with the Dean and he would share what was going on at the school. And we would critique it and we would tell him the relevancy of what he was doing and what other things we may want. And to this day, every Dean since that time has followed that same pattern, which is an effective way for a Barney school to ask their customers, what do you need? And we have two customers. We have you, the students, but we also have the businesses because we want to train you to be prepared to go serve with our other customer base. So after being on the board of visitors, about three years later, the Dean asked me, how would you like to teach? And so I said, sure. So I came on board and I taught a strategy course to the seniors. And then I also taught business organization. And um, I did that for about three years. And then uh, what happened is in 2008, there was a financial crisis going on all over the world. And the Dean said to me, how would you like to teach an applied finance and investment course? And I jumped at that. I thought that would be a terrific opportunity. During a crisis, the school gave us $250,000 for the students to invest, not me. I was the guide on the side. The students would be investing in global and green funds. And so it was a terrific opportunity for them. And so um, when I retired, I was then asked if I was uh, interested in joining the Board of Regents for the entire university. So that was about two years ago. But I was also asked if I would be an executive uh, in residence uh, for the Barney School to teach. And again, I accepted both of those. And this past summer, I was named Dean of the school. So my journey has come full circle. All I learned here, I applied in business and all that I learned in business, I applied here. And I have the honor to lead the school that did so much for me. So what am I doing as Dean? Well, my belief is that we must make our students career ready. And the cornerstone of that is making sure the students have exposure, not just to the, to the technical knowledge that the professors have to offer, but also from the business community so that you can be taught by both. And that's the model we have. In addition to that, we do experiential learning. And you're going to hear about that in a few moments uh, from our guest from Amazon. And we have a lot of experiences like that. And uh, we'll possibly have time to explain more of them as we go on. So if you choose Barney, you'll be taught by subject ex expert professors, as well as the business professionals that I mentioned. You'll have the experiential learning, you'll have the internships, and most importantly, you're going to have the tools. One thing to have knowledge, but you also need to operate the tools and we'll make sure you'll have that. So when you leave Barney, what we want you also to be like me is competent, connected and competent. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it over to Celia now. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, students. Good morning to your parents and all of our members of our panel. Good morning, Dean. That morning. was a warm, wonderful welcome to our participants. And I'm about to go into the slides I want to share with you all. But I do want to say before I get 
uh, to my portion of this uh, session with you is that what you heard from our dean is um, a differentiator. What you have to face over the next months of a decision to make about your school of choice, I really want you to remember what he shared with you. That is a very unique situation that I don't think you're going to find at other colleges you're looking at where you have a dean that look what happened. He came from within Barney, got your degree, went out and got a, a, an amazing amount of business experience at a significant executive level and then came back to us. And now we have the ability under his vision and leadership to provide to you success. That's what you want. You want to be career ready. You want to get your first job out of your four year degree in a passion and a path that you want to be in. And um, I think because of having a dean that's got this kind of experience and this love of Barney, that's a fabulous differentiator to um, put in your um, scorecard, which I'm about to share with you, of a way that you can, I hope, make a good decision about your future. And I will tell you, I hope they decide Barney. I do. Too. I do. So let's go back, Liz. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and I'm going to probably ask you to just make sure you can see it. Are we good, Liz? Yes, okay. you can see your screen. Excellent. So you are, we are in Barney trading room, um, which is when you go to the left of that picture of the building and through those doors, that's where we are in this beautiful state of the art um, room that we conduct a number of classes in. And um, we think of it as, you know, a true area where you can learn and experience. So we're happy to be here with you. All right, I said to you, I wanna give you a scorecard this morning that I hope you use as you think about Barney and think about it as a potential school of choice for you uh, to have your uh, business academics um, and lead to a good uh, successful career path. So I think um, besides, you know, considering what kind of dean and leadership you want in your faculty, um, I think there's four other topics I'd like to put on your scorecard to consider. So I'm going to go through these slides. I'm going to give you my thought on what that, um, what that uh, check off, if you will, is on the scorecard and the question maybe you should ask yourself as you're thinking about it. Um, but they are four items I'd like to go through with you this morning. But before we do that, let's look over to the right hand side of this screen of this slide you're looking at. Another thing you should consider is what kind of accreditation does the School of Business have that I'm looking at? And what is the ranking and recognition? Please consider this about the Barney School. We're among the 5% top business schools um, worldwide. And that's accredited through a body called AACSB. You need to watch for that. We're very proud of that accreditation. We've had it for a number of years. We fully expect to continue to have it in the years to come as we go through reaccreditation. Um, and then further our ranking recognitions, for example, with Princeton um, Review as the one of the best business schools 2019 and 2020. So let's go on into this idea of a scorecard for you. Talk about ideal location, small classes and personal attention as a second item, a close net community as the third, um, just again on, on your items you should consider. And finally, what is the business school that will truly help you be career ready? So in terms of ideal location, here's what I'd like to tell you, I'd like to say to you. What I believe Barney School of Business has to offer for this particular check mark on your scorecard is what I think of as ideal location. So, you know, you do this yourselves, students. I've seen you do it all the time. That heart, we're the heart of Hartford, University of Hartford. We are uh, centrally located to a city that I believe has a tremendous heartbeat of innovation, entrepreneurship, and major corporations. Um, certainly insurance and finance and manufacturing and risk management, all the industries that might be appealing to you, they are here in Hartford. And if I could say that another appeal, maybe for you all listening in, that we're juxtaposed in what's commonly called the corridor. So we're halfway between New York and Boston, 
passing right through Hartford. And so that gives you not only a heart, but a core of what I think of as an ideal location. So you ask yourself, is this the kind of ideal location for me? And I hope, and I think you'll say yes when you really consider it among your choices. Next thing on the scorecard is what we call small classes and personal attention. Now, um, students and your parents listening in, one of the things that I've always um, really loved about Barney is that we know you. What I've, I've often said, the good news is we know you. And the better news is we know you um, because we're small. And given that we're small, we keep our ratio to 25 to one in the classroom, so their classes are small. And so your faculty are not just, oh, by the way, uh, we do not have graduate assistants teaching. There is none of that here. You go to a bigger school, that could likely happen. All of our faculty teaches all of our classes all of the time, right? 25 to one small ratio. So when you're in a classroom with our faculty, I would like you to remember the word on your scorecard about this topic as you are engaged. You're engaged with our faculty. And so they get to know you and they get to really um, work with you on topics and really, as Dean was saying, um, bring in their real world experience to the topic of learning um, and add that to your, your understanding of, um, of the topic that you're studying. So I don't, uh, I think you need to ask yourself the question, can I get that at other colleges I'm looking at? You wanna go to a big school, thousands of students, um, this may not be the place for you. I, I would honestly tell you that. I believe that the, the really one of the check marks on your scorecard is that we're a small um, school that will um, invite you in and ask you to engage. So, uh, and we, we make that part of our partnership with you as students and parents. Um, so that's one of uh, the thought, thoughts I wanna leave you with on that uh, topic. And again, I ask you to ask yourself the question as you go through your decision process, what do I really wanna get out of my learning in the classroom, um, sitting through a lecture, and leaving, or do I really want to be in, um, in the experience with the faculty? So let's move on uh, to the third factor I'd like you to consider on putting on your scorecard as you make your decision. Um, and that is that we believe, maybe partly by being small, that we're a community. That um, given that, um, that close knit, if you will, interaction between faculty and students and staff and the dean who often you know is out in the halls or students come in and meet with him um, we have the ability to make a commitment to you that's the word i want you to remember as i talk about this factor is when you're in a community you don't just show up or even not show up right you make a commitment and we do too so for me, what that means is that you get a formula. How about I'm going to use a big financial formula now, Dean? One plus one equals three. That's what we're here for when we're in a community. Because you and your faculty together, I think, make an exponential experience for you when we're, um, when we're making that kind of commitment to your four years with us. So that's the third factor I'd like you to consider as you check off your list is what do you want in your four-year experience? Want to just show up or do you want um, a true um, and meaningful engagement with, um, with our community here in Barney? Okay, so let's, um, before we advance this slide, I just did want to uh, mention further that you can see uh, that we have seven majors um, that are built onto the program you'll take as a, as a business student at the Barney School. And um, everybody will take general, what we call the core of business, a, a, a array of courses. 
about um, studying and, and then pursuing a business career. And then on top of that, you can focus on a particular major of interest. We've worked really hard over the years to be sure our majors and our curriculum reflect the uh, trends and the movement in the world of business. So you'll see, for example, business analytics um, and risk management and finance and marketing and entrepreneurship are all becoming um, what we know to be the reflection of the world of business at large. So we are always sure that our majors reflect that. And if the market changes, the business trends change, you can guarantee that our majors will shift and follow that um, very closely. And then minors are built into the program as well. You can always do a minor without having to take additional courses or stay longer. It's built into the, um, the program that you'll take here with us in the business school. So every major can become a minor. And um, in addition to that, we have other minors, right? Sure. Project management and, um, and certainly actuarial science, which Dean, did you wanna make any statements about our actuarial science? I know that that's a great minor. It is a good minor. Of course, we have the uh, <clears throat> insurance companies here. Right. But what we're finding is uh, with the training that does go on with the actuarial science, it's no longer limited just to the insurance world. We're seeing the casinos that are located in the southern, southeast part of our state, they're actually hiring them as well in a lot of the modeling that they do. Right. So this, uh, this minor has uh, become something that really has far reaching beyond the Hartford area. It, it's true, yeah. it's true. And we're glad to offer it um, for students who are interested in that pursuit. Um, and then on the right-hand side of the screen, again, I think, that just is another set of examples of that commitment that wraps around the majors and the minors, the, the academic program, if you will, that we're not just about a set of courses, although we think they're, they're certainly five star, um, and wrapping that around programs like a first year experience for you coming in as freshmen so that you feel like you've gotten off on a good footing as a student and as a potentially a resident here and as all the other opportunities that come outside of the classroom. And we certainly, before I go on, I wanna mention that another thing you might wanna look at in your decision process, we put you in business courses right away in your freshman year. There's a course we call the world of business that involves upperclassmen being mentors to you in that class and uh, you get to right away in your program as a freshman start uh, learning about business and exploring business options. So lots of good stuff happenings that I think can happen because we're small and we're committed to your success um, as, a, as a community of faculty, staff, and students. So be sure to um, be watching for that. And, and um, I think we will check off your list that Barney has really got that um, strength going for it. And here's the best. I have to admit, I feel like I'm leading up to a, a factor I want you to consider, and I want you to think about us when you consider this. Barney School of Business has been in the business of helping you be career ready for a number of years now, probably due to Dean Mulready's involvement with our Board of Visitors and their advice to our deans that you've got to let students work with students to be career ready. So maybe other schools will tell you, oh, us too, We're, we do that too. We do it. That's what I want you to remember is that our program integrates every step of the way from freshman year, a whole focus on what is it going to mean for you to be career ready? And that may be even just making your good choices about what you want to focus on for a major. Because by the way, my friends on the call, you can be exploratory and you can take some time to pick your major. And that's what we would do to help you do that um, decision making as part of your career readiness. I think the other thing that we really feel proud of is that we offer as uh, required courses in our curriculum courses that focus on your professional development. So beyond the content of a major, of course, you're gonna take your finance courses and some of your other courses. We're gonna have you take courses that help you build a resume, know how to do interviewing, 
know how to do a search and find for an internship and certainly know how to network and all the other good things that come with professional development and practice. So not only this is what the Dean was talking about earlier around experiential learning, that some of that experience is going to come through you're working very closely with faculty on projects and research and supporting your internships, mentoring either with students, your fellow students, um, some and potentially industry and business partners and all the other extracurriculars you can take advantage of here. So our outcomes are good. I, I mean, I think they're better than good. They're amazing. Right? Yeah, they are good. And the internship, I just want to focus on that for yeah. a moment because I think a real test of our relationship and the closest we have with our businesses is that when, nine, when uh, the pandemic came in March, so many businesses shut down and so many of our partnership companies honored the internships and allowed our students to do them uh, virtually. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that says a lot about the respect and commitment they have to our school. I agree. I agree. And I, can't, I know we're looking forward to hearing from one of those many partners in this session here in a few moments. So students and parents, I, I really believe before we leave this, leave this slide, I want you to look at the numbers and that's what you should be doing. Check, are we truly providing you a focus on your career readiness and the data, the outcomes are really what speaks to that success factor. 97% of our students um, really believe that they can function independently. They're ready is what they tell us. I'm ready. Let me get going now and, and get out there. A hundred percent of our students do an internship before they graduate. It's required. We ask them to do as many as you like, but definitely at least one. And 91% of our graduates um, say after six months out, out um, we call it their destination, um, that they are working in their field, in their major, in their passion. And, um, and uh, that's a really terrific, um, I think, metric of success of this program. Um, and good median salary is actually above average for the area. Um, we're doing very well with our students that way. And how um, I think uh, in reflection, our students are telling us they felt like they were really prepared academically and in terms of their career journey, their career preparation. So folks on the call, um, I'm not, I want to move on to our panel so that we have time to hear from our students and our business partners. Um, I want to just leave you um, in this part of the session with this thought that beyond the academics, beyond the experiential learning, we get it. You need you want to be a whole person here, right? A whole um, experience. Um, you want to have a whole experience. And so I just want to call your attention to the slide you're seeing now with all the opportunities for clubs and um, our honors program and study abroad, which is absolutely built into the program. Again, it will not delay your graduation. And we very uh, much encourage students to consider short-term or longer semester-long study abroad um, as part of your overall experience so that you can grow with us and be ready to go when it's time. Um, and I know our students are going to share a little bit of that with you as well. Mm -hmm. So Liz, at this point, the Dean and I are prepared to answer a question or two at, before we proceed into the next half of our session. Um, are you seeing anything in the chat at this point that um, we should uh, bring out maybe is on the minds of many of our participants? What do you see? Yes, yeah, so I have one question in the queue. The question is, if I'm an undecided business major, what type of resources would I have to choose my major? Okay. Okay, so in terms of resources, every student will have a counselor. And so, um, the counselor would go through what the, what the um, majors are, what types of jobs come, the commitments that you would need, uh, prerequisite courses for it. We also have the Center for uh, Student Success. And so if someone is struggling with uh, not knowing where they want to go, uh, they could go over there as well. 
So you've got a combination of people. And what you'll find is the, the, teach, uh, the, the professors here are very open. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I think help is that, you know, we talk about internships. We've actually talked to companies also about, would you let students just sh shadow you or someone in your organization for a day okay. to see what is the day in the life of this profession? Mm -hmm. And we've gotten the travelers, for example, uh, to do that. We had a hospital uh, in Manchester, Connecticut, just reach us out to us the other day. And so uh, we're sending students over there. We want them to be able to see what really goes on. We want them to uh, decide on a career that they really want to be in. And so those are the sources that uh, we have available to the students. Okay. And uh, before we go on, Liz, I just, I'd love to add, because um, uh, I, I didn't tell you all when we started the session, but I'm faculty and I teach and I am an advisor, as Dean Mulready was referring to that counseling kind of role with our students. So I feel like firsthand, I know some of these students, right. these students who say, I'm not sure yet. And I gotta tell you, if you're one of those students on this call, mm -hmm. I love working with you. you I, I think that process of exploring is important. And as Dean said, we provide you opportunities. We put those in your path very early on to visit companies, to go to lectures, to have that freshman level course. And then actually all the students get to take me as sophomores. Mm -hmm. And by then, if you've decided, it's, it's an, a one, it, it is, um, if I could just assure you, it's a process that we will take you through, as Dean said, um, again, that ability to work closely with you individually and get to know you. We, help you but it's really from behind because ultimately you will decide because of that all that opportunity and you'll feel good about that decision and be ready to start those courses in your major yeah i think insurance is a, a good example yeah uh, relatively new someone at 18 years old typically doesn't say i want to go into the insurance world but when they get here and they get some exposure to the courses and uh, insurance but they find out it's more than being a desk underwriter or being a claim adjuster or a salesperson. Mm -hmm. You know, after 9-11, the importance of a chief risk officer really flourished uh, because people needed to look at their company and see what risk actually exists here. And so insurance people, risk evaluators have gone outside of the insurance companies to help companies uh, to perform. So it, it, it's a way of combining um, really two different interests that you might have. Right. You might be interested in going into a manufacturing operation and not in insurance, yet you still need that skill set to understand the exposures that the company has. Right, absolutely. And so we can give you those experiences, students, and that will really will, and you may have that and decide, no, that one's not for me, but maybe something more entrepreneurial is. And so you're gonna hear from um, our business partner at Amazon and. Um, again, I'm just another example of how exposing you to those different experiences will help you decide. Right. Liz, I feel like we got to keep moving. I, I don't know um, if how you feel about um, holding some of these question, more questions to the end, if that's yeah. okay with you. Yes, go ahead and move on. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn this over to Dean Mulready now, and um, I, I appreciate the next set of conversations we're going to have with you because they really are around um, our students. I, I think just having that opportunity now, um, and I'm going to go ahead and let you talk a little bit about our, our partnerships. And Right, and, and it, it really is an example of an internship, and uh, I don't want to spend much time in this because I want to really get to our guests as well as the student, but you can see Amazon, which is a well-known world company, has really uh, done a terrific job. We have a local presence with them here, and uh, they're gonna explain what they've done from a charitable standpoint and the role that we've played on that. So um, let's uh, welcome Todd Peters and Samantha Mayhew uh, to the discussion. All right. So while they're turning their cameras on, I see Sam, good morning. And Todd, um, just want to make sure that your video and audio are on. 
Yes, mine is. Excellent. There you are. Good morning. And both of you, again, thank you so much for being here. As Dean Mulready said, that we want this part of our session now to be a focus on you folks, um, you and our students. And um, we'll start, if you don't mind, um, Todd, with you. Uh, you're our business partner in this uh, spotlight we're doing. And uh, if you wouldn't mind just sharing quickly uh, your role at Amazon, some of your background and uh, your role uh, on this project. Yeah, of course. Um, hi, welcome everybody again. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so my role uh, in Amazon uh, currently is I'm the quality area manager. So what that means in the building is that um, any time that we have any irregularity, say an in inventory or machinery or anything such as that, it's my job to uh, deep dive the problem, root cause it, and come up with a solution to uh, make it better. All of that is to deliver on our promise of being the most customer-centric uh, company on earth. We, want, we do everything for our customers and we want to uh, keep our customers happy and coming back to us. So my role is to ensure that we don't have uh, any disruptions in that overall process. Um, a little bit of my background, I wish I had the, uh, the uh, resume that the Dean has, but mine is a little more humble. Uh, I actually started out in uh, the humanities as a, uh, a French literature major. I have a master's in that um, from the University of Florida. So you're thinking, how did you end up at Amazon? Well, it ended up just kind of starting about that. Um, uh, I just really, looked at my skill set and thought that, you know, Amazon has such a huge outreach in multiple businesses and multiple countries. So let me just use the skills that I have as both a former educator um, and a manager in a retail environment and see what I can do. And then within the matter of three years, I've been promoted several times. Um, so definitely if you're looking for um, a company that mimics the uh, the Barney School of Business of being, you know, confident and career ready. I mean, Amazon is ready for you as well. Uh, the thing too is that uh, with the donations project, part of what we look at in terms of being customer centric is looking how can we impact the community abroad. So. Um, when you look at uh, where we are, again, being at the heart of the corridor here, you know, we're just up in Windsor. Um, we wanted to, uh, we donate as it is, just as a company, but we wanted to make sure that what we were donating and to whom we were donating um, actually really did create a, a level of impact within the community. So uh, what this project does is that it allows um, some, uh, an internship to where, uh, they can, uh, the students can get a real world experience with a real uh, project. This is a real uh, working, living, breathing uh, project management um, uh, thing to, uh, to increase uh, our footprint within the greater Hartford and Springfield area. So we look at, you know, charities of all different varieties uh, within a 25 mile uh, radius from here. We also have new buildings popping up that we're hoping that we can take what we've done here at my fulfillment center and take it down to North Haven where another fulfillment center is. Um, we're going to have another one built up just a little bit north in Windsor. So um, we're really creating uh, a great, a large network to cover the major population areas in terms of charity within uh, the greater Hartford and even further down into New Haven. So um, that's pretty much where we are. And I could just say that Samantha has been um, an incredible student. So that's probably a testament to the level of uh, scholarship and training that she's got at the Barney School, because she's really come up with some fantastic ideas that we're probably going to implement so I can take it over to her yeah isn't that nice to hear Sam huh very Stop. good so uh, before we get to you Sam I have a, a couple of questions for you um, it does sound like Barney brought some value in the partnership Todd to you folks um, is there any other comment you would like to make about why Barney why did you feel that that was an important could piece of this um, project you on you really undertook this significant donations project. So uh, the reason why we uh, chose the University of Hartford is, um, is just kind of what you had mentioned before, like in your introduction, just as proximity is, 
is incredible. Uh, also, too, um, even though it is a you know a national uh, university, it does have a lot of connections within uh, the immediate vicinity around here with students that are from this area, and um, and it's kind of like twofold. So in our uh, effort to expand our uh, our presence, as it were, in um, in charities throughout the Hartford area. Uh, we all, by allowing students that are, are local, you know, within our own communities um, to participate in our company and the way that we, that we work, uh, that's kind of like, again, going along with the mission of that you will get the real world experience um, with a large company, even if you're going to stay particularly local. Thank you so much. And again, I know that um, uh, the, your comments about the value it brought to you are just really significant. And and it's great to it's great to hear. It really is a um, an amazing, uh, mutually beneficial opportunity. Because as you said, Sam brought a lot to the table as a student. So if I could turn to you, Sam, why don't you do a quick introduction of who you are and um, and what did you do on the project? What was your exact role? Definitely. So I am Sam Mayhew. I'm a senior management major. Um, so going off what Todd explained about the project, I was a volunteer for the project last um, semester and then this summer applied for the internship role. So what I was focused on was improving that donation process with my internship partner. So we looked at things like the donation site or organization charity selection process. So that's where we implemented a needs-based analysis. Like Todd said, a lot of focus was on community impact and how to have that greatest impact. So we decided looking at a needs-based analysis, focusing on specifically Hartford and organizations within the city of Hartford would be the best um, impact of donations. So we looked at implementing that suggestion to Amazon, um, as well as the kind of final of the project was a website prototype. So on Amazon's end where they were having um, just some pickup issues for organizations to come. Um, it was an idea on our end to solve that by this website where organizations have a login and a password so they can view all the information. So that was another suggestion that we proposed um, in, a, in a prototype form. Wow. So what I'm hearing, Sam, is a couple of different things that you really brought to the table for Todd and your work with him that we truly value add for the project. Um, what did you learn? Did, did you learn some things that maybe you couldn't have gotten just from the classroom that um, you think of as now part of your experience and skills? Oh, yes. Um, I think the internship was a wonderful opportunity for real world experience. And like Todd said, this is an ongoing living, breathing project. So to be able to have an opportunity to work hands on with a real project with a very huge e commerce company, either way, just a um, very involved company and growing company was awesome. Um, a lot of collaboration happened. Um, you know, every week we were we were coming back to Todd with ideas and collaborating, um, and so absolutely gave me a very unique experience at the classroom. I think separate from the classroom, and I realized that with this experience, um, it taught me that my passion is definitely with creating a social impact in the future. So. Um, being involved with the donation process made me realize that I'm interested in, in creating social impact in my future with a, with a job. That's great. Yes. Wonderful stuff, right? Awesome. Yeah, it's just a comment. Todd, I, you know, when I worked at Crum and Forrester, we were part of um, Fairfax Financial, and the chairman of that company always reminded us we need to do well in order to do good. And Amazon is just such a terrific company. We just love the idea that you're doing social good for our community and bringing our students into the process. Well done. Well done. And an amazing oh, thank you. We thank you so much for the partnership. And Sam, um, we're so proud of you as a student. Um, and I can see your passion in, in your 
getting close to launch now, right, for your career. So it's nice to know that you've had this, as you call it, the real world experience that has um, now um, given you a, a good base for what you believe is your future, which is exciting. Your future is exciting. Yes, it is. Great. Okay, so thank you both. Um, I'm gonna advance to the next uh, student spotlights we'd like to do. Um, and so while we're having our students, Garrick and Sakari, turn their videos on and their audio, um, I'm gonna now turn this back over to the Dean to facilitate through some um, focus on these great students that again, we hope that all of you listening in will be um, as you consider joining us next year. Great, thanks very much. Uh, Garrick, welcome. Hello, Dean, how you doing? Hello, Dr. Lofink, thank you for having me. I'm doing well, you know, we we're gonna talk about internships, but I think we've covered that quite a bit. So I thought perhaps it'd be best if we just ask you, talk a little bit about your experience in here and what you appreciated by coming here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we talking about the internship first or my experience at Barney first? Absolutely, whatever you prefer. Gotcha, gotcha. So when it when it comes to my internship, as I'm an accounting major, my internship was at Thomas Eddy Coolis and Company right here in Hartford itself. My internship was focused on tax, and even in that, my specialization was only focused on homeowners association form 1120H and that's all I did back to back to back and it was a lot of tax work. When it comes to accounting, your experience can either go into public accounting or you can go to private. When it comes to public, you can either go auditing or you could go tax or you could go the advisory level, right? And this was just one segment of the accounting public level. And this really gave me a good understanding of what it looks like in the real professional world and gave me a good understanding of, is it tax that I want to pursue or is it that I want to do another internship, maybe next semester or next summer, maybe an audit or like other platforms when it comes to accounting as well. So it was a, I would say it was a good experience. It gave me a good overview of what it looks like to be an accountant behind the desk in the real world. And when it comes to Barney School of Business, I have always focused on, um, as I'm a lead career fair mentor at the Office of Career and Professional Development on campus as well, I've always focused on inside the classroom development and outside the classroom development. So it's really important to be active in the school itself and not just focus on grades. Yes, it's our priority. We're here to get a degree and get good grades. But then again, we need to be active and we need to be social even in the school itself. So I would say, when it comes to Barney, my best thing that I got out of Barney was the career readiness Dr. Lofink was talking about just in the previous slides. When we talk about career readiness, it's anything which comes to or which makes you career ready, right? It would be the professionalism, it would be the social gatherings and um, even like professional dinner meets. So I would say it's the career ready for me, definitely. Very good, thank you. So uh, I see you're graduating uh, next spring. Uh, have you decided what your plans are going to be? When it comes to my plans, um, I know some people already have job offers waiting for them and they would want to um, work, continue uh, continue to work right after the graduate. But when it comes to me, I want to um, further my education, do my master's in a dual master's program at UHART itself, the MSAT, which is Master's of Science in uh, Accounting and Taxation and the MBA program. So it's a mix of both. And I would do that. And I'm also trying to be a graduate assistant at the office where I work right now at the Office of Career and Professional Development. So I think overall, that would be a good add-on to my educational degree in my resume. That's great. It sounds like you have a good plan set forth for you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me. Let's, let's move over to Sakari now and, uh, and talk to her about her experience here. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. Yes. Thanks for joining us. No problem. So I interned recently, the last semester into the summer, at the Entrepreneurial Center slash the Women's Business Center, and I was the assistant to the program manager, and I helped her with um, preparing for events. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to have one of our biggest events because of COVID, which was the matchmaker event. 
but we were still able to make it work and we did a virtual basically connection for them. And I also helped with a lot of research and that research also helped lead to a $500,000 grant for the program, which was great so we can use it for our clients and also continue like our services for them and helping their um, businesses and small businesses. And also collaborated with the other departments and like the marketing sector with the newsletters and all of that. That's great. So real life experience. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that was done your internship within the school. Mm -hmm. uh, which I don't think uh, either Celia or I mentioned that uh, those are opportunities as well. So that worked out very well for you. Yeah. So I see you're also graduating uh, in 21 from your undergraduate degree. What plans do you have? Yes, so I plan on getting my certifications and hopefully I will like to attend Columbia's um, digital media program and get, um, hone my skills on that in digital media marketing and get a job in that field and probably relocate to New York or LA, one of those areas and really. And if I recall, you, you come from New York, correct? Yes, my home is in New York, yes. Well, yeah. Back to the big city. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we wish you luck as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. So, Kari, before we um, uh, finish our time with you, talk a little bit about some of your extracurriculars. We had a slide earlier saying, you know, when at Barney, we believe that a part of, you know, your growth is um, beyond the classroom. And I know you've done some um, pretty, uh, I think amazing um, extracurricular clubs and all that. What, tell us about that. Yes, I have. So currently I am the vice president of the African Student Union on campus because I my family comes from Nigeria. So I'm very into my culture. And so I joined the club because I feel like a lot of people should get to know about the African culture and its beauty and all that we have to offer. So we have meetings on that weekly throughout the campus and for like informational meetings and like little fun get togethers. And I also am a part of the BSU Brothers and Sisters United fashion show, which they have every year, which is a very big um, deal because they use it as a way to raise money for their book fund for students so that they can have access to free textbooks because we know how expensive those can be. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's a great way for them to raise money for to help us so everything just goes back into the community on campus. Right. So thank you for that. And mm -hmm. um, I know Garrick also is very active in um, junior achievement, which is a, you know, as we all maybe many of you know, is a wonderful worldwide organization with, and we have a very strong partnership between Barney and JA. So again, students listening um, in and visiting with us today, um, I hope that you hear that, that at its core, we want to be sure that you get all your good academic preparation and your work real life experience at work. And beyond that, all this wonderful extracurricular opportunity um, to uh, really be ready to launch, right? Sakari, I can see all of you really being re getting closer and closer to launch. I would definitely recommend stepping out of your comfort zone and joining a club because they're a great way to, you know, involve yourself in the community and so that you can really get the best of your college experience and network with people and really build your interpersonal skills and communication skills with others. All right. So we're going to move into Liz. This is a, a time now where we wanted to Again, we have a few minutes left with everyone. You've had a long day, participants. I know you've been on since earlier this morning mm -hmm. with the University of Hartford and came to this Meet the College. We thank you again for being here with us. And let's see if you have any questions you'd like any of us to answer, our students that are still on, and um, certainly Dean Mulready and I are happy to answer. What, what questions, Liz? Yes, yeah, so we have a couple in our queue, and I'll start with the first one. How do you find internships at as a business student? So uh, first of all, let me ask our students, anybody like to respond to that? Sure, I would love to talk about that. 
Um, so when it comes to internships, a lot of companies and a lot of recruiters come to campus for different kinds of occasions and events already on campus, be it in the form of career fairs or be it in form of resume boot camps, where a lot of employees would just come and they would give you tips on what your resume should look like and what they're kind of expecting from you. And again, it's not as formal as career fair, so you're able to like make a um, rapport with them and a relationship in those um, few minutes you spend with them on every table with the different employers. And then you can obviously like reach out to them again. And that has actually proven to be a lot useful when it comes to internships, even though you, were, you might not expect it to be like, like that. Um, but again, yes, career fairs, um, resume boot camps in Barney School itself, we have a lot of spotlight events where a lot of recruiters and employers will come and talk about a business topic or a leadership point, right? And they would also come bearing information about internships and full-time opportunities. And sometimes they would just solely come for that purpose as well. So a lot of companies I know, like especially the insurance companies around here, travelers, they're always on campus. When it comes to accounting, we have all big four coming to campus. We have uh, other companies like Grant Thornton next in the list as well coming on campus, which, which we just had um, on, on Monday, I think of this week. And then next Monday, um, just day after tomorrow, we have Cone Resident coming as well. So we always have such events where you can um, kind of connect with these recruiters and reach out to them for applications. And then I would say, even apart from that, you always have uh, resources like Handshake, um, which is uh, something like LinkedIn where Recru campus recruiters for companies only come um, looking for UHART students. So when you apply for a job on LinkedIn, it's the whole herd applying over there. It's UConn and other colleges, and even someone who's not in college applying for that job that you be applying for. But when it's handshake, it's only um, recruiters focusing on our university. So it also increases your chance of being accepted for an interview as well. So I would say these were some examples that I could think of right out, out of my mind. Again, Thank you, Garrick. Thank you. And I was just going to add, and I know um, you've experienced this firsthand too, your advisors, your professors, the dean, we all have an amazing network, right? And we like to, again, get behind you and help you uh, with those connections as well. Um, Liz, how are we doing? Any other questions? I'm also watching our time. I don't want to keep people too far beyond our commitment. How are we doing? Yes, we have two more questions. So this would be either good for um, a student or you can answer. How would you describe the community atmosphere at the business school? Oh, what a great question, huh? Um, Sakari, did you want to step in and answer that one? Are you able to video on? Yes. Oh, there you are. Yes, I would definitely say it's a very warm and welcoming community. I definitely love the fact that you can easily talk to your professors and any faculty members because I know if I were to go to U Albany or any other school, that probably would not likely happen. And I'm glad that I can um, interact with my professors both professionally and um, on the side if I need anything personally. And it's very welcoming community so that I can really connect and get the best out of my education and like my professional experience. Right. Thank you, Sakari. I know that those words are coming from a place in you that you've, you've experienced that firsthand with us. Mm -hmm. we, we're, it's a commitment, right, to a relationship and a journey. And we really believe in all of you. And I said earlier, students listening in and visiting, we know you. Um, I, I am proud to say we know every student in the business school. And I know when you're having a bad day or I know when you know, um, you're celebrating something and we celebrate with you. So thank you for those comments, Sakari. One last question, Liz. One last question. The last question is, what is it like being a commuter student in the business school? Great question. Sam, are you still on? Yes, I am. And I would, you're a commuter, aren't you? Yes. Um, so I would say being a residential student the past three years and then being a commuter this senior year, at least this semester, um, there's really not a big difference being a commuter versus being a residential student within the Barney School of Business. Um, I don't think there's 
ever a problem that you would come across any sort of difference. Um, I think that our small class size going back to just the environment of Barney is the small class size contributes to how well you don't only know professors but students. So being in my fourth year, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces and by the fourth year there's students that I know that I've seen in classes and now are part of my friends who I can just see in the hallway and say hi to. So there's really been no, I don't think there's any difference for a commuter or a residential student. I just want to kind of, you know, what we try to do for the entire university is have students spend at least the first two years on campus right. because we do want them to get the total experience, be part of um, different clubs and so forth, take advantage of activities that occur at the heart school, for example, or the music school, they're always performing. And so that's helpful to get a broader reach and also get some cultural issues that you would not necessarily get just by being a Barney student. So right. that's the advantage of the university experience. Yeah. And then I was going to add just the space, right, Sam, when you're in Barney, the space is to congregate and be together, I think, again, promotes um, the, uh, you know, the transparency of, um, you know, the student body being engaged um, around learning and transcends, I guess, the residential over commuter status, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are we good, Liz? Should we, I, I do want to be sensitive. I see we're just at one o'clock. So I was thinking we can wrap and I know you'll probably save any other questions to get back to people. Sure. So feel free to move on to the next slide. Okay. And so before we do that, I know you're going to do a wrap. I just want to say um, thank you, Dean. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks to everyone who participated. Uh, I would agree uh, being on, uh, on a screen for uh, as many hours as our guests have been is, is, is challenging, but we appreciate that they stayed to the end with us. Yes. And uh, we hope you're, you could contact us. Uh, I'll leave you my email address. It's mulready at hartford.edu. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a note yeah. and I'll reach and he, back out to you. That's the beauty, right? He, we were small and he will, I can tell you that. And uh, if I could just leave you with a thank you all for being here. And again, remember your scorecard. I really believe if you go through it, ideal location, check. Small classes and personal atten attention, check. Close-knit community, engaged with um, across students, faculty, and staff, check. And finally, career ready, competent, confident, and connected, right? Check. Thanks for being here. Liz, I'll leave it to you for the, your last slide. Awesome. Thank you both Celia and Dean Mulready. So as you can see from this slide, please look out for an email to attend our additional Barney sessions next week on September 29th and October 1st. You'll be able to learn about the majors in depth, our accelerated three plus one program and learn about a student's perspective as a business student. Celia, if you can move on to the next slide, my contact info is on the next slide. There's my email address and my telephone number. So please reach out if you have any questions. I also am available by Zoom to have any Zoom sessions with families as well. So feel free to ask any questions too. Thank you all for joining us today, and I hope to see you on campus soon. This webinar has been recorded and available to all of you today. Thank you, and have a great day.